as those shield volcanoes are erupting and the lava is flowing downhill, the outer layer of lava rapidly cools into hard basalt. But underneath that outer crust, there is still molten liquid lava flowing as long as the vent is erupting. As that lava flows through and eventually drains out, a hollow tube will remain underground. And that's what they call lava tubes. These lava rivers flowed similar to river deltas. They took multiple paths and kind of twisted and turned around one another. So underground, that created multiple chambers. Sometimes these chambers are small little spaces that you can barely squeeze through, where other times the chambers are larger and you can walk through them. Now, one thing that people are often looking for inside of caves are things like stalactites and stalagmites. And you can see here in the lava tubes, we have what look like stalactites. But technically, these aren't stalactites. Stalactites form because of calcium buildup in limestone rocks, and specifically inside of what's known as karst caves. In lava tubes, these aren't the result of calcium buildup. This is the result of superheat. As that lava continues to flow through this river, it will reheat the roof of this cave. And that superheated rock will then liquefy and start to melt. So what you see as little stalactites are actually pieces of melted molten ceiling that kind of drip down and rehardened into these little pillars. Now, another thing that you'll see in lava river caves are big cracks and fissures through the various roofs and walls. This is the result of lava cooling down. And as that lava cools, it actually shrinks. And where the rock is weakest, it will crack and kind of split apart. It is important to be cautious when you're inside of a lava river cave, because sometimes those cracks and fissures can weaken the rock to such a point that the roof will actually collapse in on itself. These caves formed as those shield volcanoes erupted, sending rivers of lava downhill. But shield volcanoes are polygenetic, which means they erupt multiple times over the course of thousands and thousands of years. Those multiple eruptions will build up layers of volcanic rock, but also potentially layers of lava tubes. So as big and as open as this cavern is, just imagine below us, there could be another subterranean system that no one's ever explored or discovered. And below that, there could be even more subterranean caves that we just don't know about. Some things that you're gonna wanna bring into the cave with you are adequate supplies of light sources. You can see I got my stick light right here, I've got my headlamp on, and in my backpack, I've got a couple more backup lights, just in case one of these breaks or cracks or the batteries run out. That way I'm not stuck deep underground with no light source. Caves are considered a significant non-renewable resource. And one of the most important resources they provide is habitat for a variety of animals. So porcupines, squirrels, other rodents, everything from mountain lions to bears, they can use caves as a place to rest and recover. But most people associate caves with one animal in particular, and that's the bat. And here in the lava tube, Sure enough, we've got some Vesper bats. Now, most people are scared of bats, but I think bats are really cool. They're great to have around because they're insect annihilators. All they're doing all night is flying around eating moths and mosquitoes and all the other creepy crawlies that I don't really want messing with me. And a bat's gonna kind of leave me alone, I'm gonna leave him alone. So it's very cool to see him hanging on the ceiling here, but we're gonna step away and let him get back to his rest. Now, as you walk down this lava tube, remember that this was all created by molten flowing lava. So the ceiling and the walls and the floor, that's where the outer ring of lava hardened and solidified. But inside that molten rock was still flowing. Now this flow could have lasted for decades or a few thousand years, but eventually the vent stopped erupting and the lava drained out. What's really cool about this tube in particular is you can see this kind of elevated platform that I'm walking on. This is the last little trickle of lava that was flowing through this cave, draining out, and it hardened to create the floor. 